on Ocean 89 starting at 6.30 p.m. We'll have special guests joining us for interviews during the event. This live coverage of the Christmas Boat Parade on Ocean 89 is December 8th. This special presentation has been brought to you by lead sponsor HSBC. You can count on us. Save $1.30 on Purdue Fresh Chicken Leg Quarters, only $1.59 per pound. For a great snack, golden ripe pineapples, just $4.99 each. Crisco Original of Butter Shortening Sticks, just $4.89 for a 20-ounce package. Dental Disinfectant Spray, only $3.99 for a 400-milliliter tin. Select varieties of Tide Simply Liquid Laundry Detergent, only $7.49 for a 40-ounce bottle. Visit our website at www.marketplace.pm for more weekly specials. You can count on us. You're watching Bermuda Tonight. It's Thursday, December the 6th. I'm Jasmine Patterson, and thanks for joining us. People have just had enough. This is according to the Bermuda Union of Teachers after all public paraeducators staged sick-out action today in protest of alleged inaction by the government to improve working conditions. But the Education Minister, Diallo Rabain, has hit back, calling the action completely unacceptable. More than 100 paraeducators employed by the Department of Education did not report for work today. The sick-out action is yet another attempt to bring attention to their grievances. Just last Friday, all 12 primary school teachers at West Pembroke took similar action over a lack of support staff and other issues. The education minister today urged teachers to halt the disruption, saying it's having a negative effect on the students and their learning experience. I find this action completely unacceptable because paraeducators are an important portion of our teaching experiences. They are the ones that are in the classrooms with students that have particular uh, special needs that need to be met with our ASD teachers, with our function, uh, ASD programs, and with our functional skills programs. Without paraeducators within the school system, we run the risk of putting our students at real risk. And at the end of the day, it's about our students. They say windows are not functional, fire alarms are broken, and computer software is outdated. Paraeducators and education therapists say they are working without a job description, and some are not afforded breaks. There are no allocated substitute teachers at primary schools. Further, there are no education officers for maths, English, and science. But out of the 23 listed concerns from the teachers, Mr. Rabain says eight are related to BUT negotiations handled under the collective bargaining agreement. While the remaining 15 outstanding issues are in the process of being addressed or require long-term solutions. Despite what I would call positive discussions, we are still faced with actions by the BUT and their members at an unsustainable rate. Last Thursday, the BUT forwarded us a list of 23 items of concerns based on a full membership meeting they held last Tuesday with their membership. On Monday of this week, we met with the BUT for just over three hours to address these very concerns. Mr. Rabain also said that students will not receive their half-term report cards as the teachers have refused to input students' grades into the new online standard grading system. We are anxious to release the report cards. What I can announce, which we do find completely unacceptable, is that the union has advised their teachers to not enter grades into our system. This is something that we're also working on as well. It's something that we find completely unacceptable because, again, it's about ensuring an educational system that is, that is fair and honest for our students, for teachers to be or to be just to be uh, told not to enter grades into the system, is a it's a dangerous precedent that's being set, and we intend to address that as quickly as we can. However, in a press release, the BUT says the minister's comments are misleading, as teachers are confused on standards-based grading, and therefore the grades that have been entered have not been as accurate as they need to be. They add he needs to talk less and act more, because the time for talking has long gone, end quote. Meanwhile, Opposition Education Minister Cole Simons calls for better communication between stakeholders following today's industrial action by public school paraeducators. In a press release, Mr. Simons asked whether it's now time to consider an independent education authority to, quote, take the politics out of education. He adds, this tension, dysfunction, and challenge that we see today truly demonstrates how the minister and the ministry are disconnected from what really transpires in our schools, from a teaching, paraprofessional, administrative, professional, professional development and support perspective and most importantly parental perspective end quote 
Uh, the future of the old town of St. George tonight back in the spotlight with the PLP MPs for St. George giving their personal backing to legislation that now enables the tourism minister a greater say over the running of the Bermuda Tourism Authority. MPs Renee Ming and Kim Swan say government input over tourism is important, especially in light of recent BTA decisions to cut financing for tourism sites in the old town. Tarai Trot reports. For St. George's MPs Renee Ming and Kim Swan, the decision by the Tourism Authority to cut funding to programs in St. George's shows why it is important for government to have a say in the direction of the island's tourism product. Because the government uh, who fund the um, Tourism Authority uh, feel that the minister himself needs to have greater input and within the BTA. Uh, we hear all the cries about uh, what people would like to suggest. What it is is that um, s things such as we're experiencing in St. George's need to be, the tourism authority need to have a tie-in into the political politics of Bermuda in general. Both MPs voted in favor of the Tourism Authority Amendment Act 2018 when it was before the House of Assembly. That bill, now approved by the Senate, will give the tourism minister power to appoint members to the Tourism Authority's Board of Directors. Mrs. Ming echoing Mr. Swan's view, she came out on the record recently against the BTA's decision not to award funding to St. Peter's Church, which is considered a tourism attraction in the old town. Um, there are either items that fall under the BTA's remit. Um, you spoke about the donking, um, the, um, what else did you mention, the walking tours. Um, so these are items that we are concerned about and at the time when I was expressing the interest for St. George's, I was asking the BTA, what is your plan with regard to St. George's? Because what we in St. George's would want to see is something that highlights the tradition, the culture and the history of St. George's. The BTA decision to cut funding for tourism programs in St. George's, begging the potentially absurd question, is St. George's still relevant as a tourism destination? For both MPs, the question is not valid. St. George's will always be relevant as a Bermuda tourism destination. Um, the fact that a body that is funded by government may uh, undervalue in its decision making and its budget allocation what's it required. Let me say this, that we, speaking um, with our colleagues, the, the, the minister, and working in tandem with bodies like the Corporation of St. George's, will always fight to make sure that St. George's remains front and center. I think the question of is St. George's relevant is, is in our minds probably crazy. Of course St. George's is relevant. I mean the um, mere fact that that's where it all started for Bermuda in itself, its history speaks for itself. And to those who believe that the BTA should be left alone to operate as an independent body. The government still funds the BTA and the appointments of the BTA were political appointments. And so uh, any jurisdiction will appreciate that, a, that, a, that an entity funded, unable to make itself financially self-sufficient, that's relying on government funds, needs to ensure that the government needs to ensure that it also is acting on behalf of the will of the people. But BTA Strategy and Communications Director Glenn Jones insists that the BTA will always look out for St. George. Uh, on St. Peter's Church, for example, uh, we have been working with them since the last time that we spoke. And um, we've sort of already made a pledge to work with them to market the unfinished church and to figure out a way to create an experience for visitors where they can earn revenue. Um, those are both revenue-generating potentials, and I think that is what we're trying to get um, the folks at St. Peter's to focus on. Um, they have articulated that um, funds is essential for their survival, and what we'd like to do is show them a pathway to earning revenue where their funds um, problem is solved. Um, so while they did get um, denied in the experiences grant process because their application wasn't eligible, they weren't offering an experience, we are now working with them to figure out ways to generate revenue using the unfinished church and creating an experience around what happens at St. Peter's. And in that universe, there might be a time when St. Peter's Church no longer needs to apply. 
We'll have more for you after this short break, including all the latest weather news. Stay with us. Getting ready for Christmas is all about the finishing touches. The icing on the cake. The table neatly set. Decorations specially placed. And gifts thoughtfully wrapped. All to share with those we love. In special moments as simple as this. Merry Christmas. And a Happy New Year. Colonial, where people come first. Hey Smokey, let's get lunch from the Marketplace Food Court. You know what? That sounds good. They have oxtails, pumpkin, curried lamb, lamb and chicken, sweet and sour ribs, vegetable stir fry, and the variety goes on. Their chefs are good. They'll set you right up with all the good carbons. And don't forget the special dishes from the island. It don't matter. Well, no matter what you feel like eating, Marketplace will have it. You know, it's quick, it's quality, and at prices you can count on. Visit us seven days a week. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Made for you daily at the Hamilton Marketplace Food Court. Rise and Shine Entertainment and Inferno Productions presents Ladies Night Out, December 22nd, 2018, in True Hill, live in Bermuda at Hamilton Princess, inside the Harborview Ballroom. Bermuda, what's poppin'? This your boy Cisco, letting you know that on December 22nd, we're coming to you. That's right, live, myself and Drew Hill. So make sure you are there to see us do what we do. Singing hits like Also Also featuring local DJs DJ Rusty G, Craig Bubbles Daryl And DJ Bernie Mac Hosted by Natanja General tickets are $50, VIP $75 More at the door Available at Inferno Lounge and PTX.BM Doors open at 9pm It's Drew Hill, Drew Hill. Giving you a night you never forget. In Bermuda, December 22nd at the Hamilton Princess. It's Ladies Night Out. 16,000 Bermudians find the easiest, cheapest way to bring packages to Bermuda is with U.S. Express at mailboxes. There are things that you can't ship to Bermuda sometimes, especially IT equipment and things like that. It's just easy to put in a U.S. address and it just gets there every time. Uh, they notify me immediately when the packages show up. If they need an invoice, I send it to them. But when I show up here, it's ready to go. When you shop online, always use your mailbox's U.S. Express address in New Jersey to save money. Thanks for staying with us. Debt collecting agencies' commissions were cut drastically as a result of a new legislation. The new debt collection bill passed in the House of Assembly recently attempts to clamp down on predatory lenders. Deputy Opposition Leader Leah Scott gave us her take on the bill. The Bermuda Credit Association, uh, Bermuda Debt Collection Agency, and some law firms that actually practice debt collection will be guided by the infrastructure that has been established. There are some things that came out of it um, that are concerning to those agencies. The collection fee for debt now is 33 and a third, the commission I think it is for, for collecting debts is 33 and a third percent. That's been reduced to 20 percent. I understand the need to have a framework to make sure that the agencies are doing what they're supposed to be doing fairly, but the greater concern is that Mr. and Mrs. Bermuda are still in debt. They're still going to be subject to some fees to collect their outstanding debt. This legislation does not apply to loan sharks. So there are people who engage in lending to people at exorbitant interest rates because they have, and you know, they're private lenders, and so they take advantage of people because people don't have anybody else to lend them money so they can charge extortionate interest rates. And I don't know how we address that or what legislation we can put in place to cover that, but that is something that also needs to be addressed. The reality is we need to create a situation so that Mr. and Mrs. Bermuda are not in debt, and the best way for them to get out of debt is with a job. Only one person should be breaking into your home this Christmas, warns the Bermuda Police Service. Tis the season for thieving, and you'll be sorry, says Acting Superintendent Nicholas Pedro, if you don't keep your valuables locked up between now and the new year. Based on past experience, this is our peak season for thieves and fraudsters, and to please be vigilant and make sure that it is safe for you and your loved ones. And during the holidays, Christmas thieves are more likely to be on the prowl, says Mr. Pedro, as they become more desperate to make ends meet. Business owners should also be on the lookout. Some of the biggest losses are often incurred by local businesses and financial institutions, so commercial customers are encouraged to keep a keen eye on their books.
With the use of smartphones and computers, these transactions can be done quickly and out of sight, and traditional fraud can take longer to detect. Added pressure to provide over the holidays will drive criminals to take higher risks and exploit opportunities to deprive us of our hard-earned money and property. Yes, yeah, some very sage advice there. Now let's head over to the AccuWeather headquarters for the latest. AccuWeather is presented by BFNM Insurance Group. We now go to AccuWeather headquarters. This AccuWeather forecast here on ZBM is brought to us by the folks at the BFNM Insurance Group. Uh, and uh, we're dealing with a little bit of a cooler weather pattern. Temperatures are down. The wind is from the northwest. That's driving some of these clouds across the western Atlantic. Uh, and that's a sign of the cooler air when you see that kind of flow and that uh, type of cloud across the western and northwestern Atlantic as that chilly air spills down from North America. So we're going to be dealing with this chilly weather. We're stuck in the 60s this evening and tomorrow even for our highs. Most of the rain is off to the east. There may be a few more spotty showers that redevelop over our heads tomorrow with a secondary front that rolls in for the beginning of the weekend, but uh, most of the time will be dry. We're at 65 in uh, places uh, like St. George's and really across the island, mid-60s for everybody. Humidity is also at 65 percent. Winds are from the northwest at 5 to 10 knots, and uh, on the inside we have 1 to 3 foot waves. On the outside, though, there are some big waves. 6 to 10 footers are rocking and rolling this evening, and because of that, the small craft warning that has been in effect will continue through tonight. Uh, when it comes to the tides, high tide 754 this evening, the tide goes back out early, uh, well, in the middle of the night, 143 a.m., and then uh, into the day on Friday, a high tide at 817, low tide in the mid-afternoon. Uh, so tonight we get down to 60, partly cloudy skies, and temperatures only warm up to around 67. It'll be another cool day with a mix of sunshine and some clouds. In fact, more clouds than sun probably. And there will be a few brief showers, spotty showers, especially in the afternoon. Uh, and uh, some of these may clip on through into the evening as well tomorrow night. So here goes front number one. That's offshore and well off to the east. Uh, and the second front here is going to be a weak one. But it might be just enough to spark a brief sprinkle or shower uh, on the map. And you can see Futurecast keeps most of that activity to our north, but we will include the brief mention of a sprinkle in our forecast as well. Down into the Caribbean, we don't have any tropical threats. Great weather into Jamaica and Barbados looking really nice there. There are some rain showers down into the Windward Islands, though, places like Trinidad and up into Scarborough, Tobago. Uh, there may be a few showers uh, out there as well. It is uh, colder than average across most of eastern North America. In Toronto, we're only around 25. Uh, and uh, in New York City, only 40. Average highs are into the mid to upper 40s still in this, uh, this part of the year. Boston, a high of 38, generally dry, though. Atlanta, 52. That's nippy for North Georgia. Uh, and in Miami, only 77. Down into London or out to London to the east, it's uh, a seasonable 55, but there are some showers out there. So looking at our local forecast here in Bermuda, we have spotty showers Friday, especially late in the day. Saturday, a few more showers as this glancing blow, a weak front passes uh, mainly to our north. Uh, it'll just clip on through. Temperatures stay cool. We may briefly dip into the upper 50 Saturday night, Sunday morning. And then uh, we have widespread rain, but a big surge in temperatures, warming trend leading up to rain on Monday, maybe even a rumble of thunder Monday night and Tuesday, still wet and milder, if not warmer. We'll send it back to you. AccuWeather was presented by BFNM Insurance Group. KFC, for when you've worked up an appetite and deserve a treat for yourself. Happy Holidays, from all of us at KFC. KFC, it's finger licking good. Christmas in Bermuda is a special time for most of us. Unfortunately for some families in Bermuda, there's no warm Christmas. This year, many families will be in need. It's the 30th anniversary of the Lions Clubs of Bermuda and the Marketplace helping share the Christmas spirit, so let's help take care of each other. 
Shop at any marketplace, shopping center, modern mart, or A1 stores and purchase extra tins of non-perishable items. Once you have purchased these items, place your food donation into Santa's bin located at the front of the store. The Lions Clubs will collect your food contributions and assemble them into hampers to be delivered to the families in need around the island. Christmas comes once a year. Help make it a special time for every family in Bermuda. Sponsored in part by the Bermuda Broadcasting Company. Share the Christmas spirit. Sport Now and Earl Basin has the very latest. Bermuda's two sailors were back on the waters in Australia as Raquel Evans and Campbell Patton continue competing in the Sail Sydney Sailing Regatta. Two more races were sailed in the Laser Radial Open Fleet where Patton marched up the leaderboard. He started the day in 19th but ended the day in 9th. Patton finished the first race of the day in the 5th of the series in 5th place and then he won the second race of the day to finish with 49 net points. Evans fell down two places from his starting position on the day. This after two more races on day three. Evans started the day in ninth place but came off the water in 11th after finishes of 14th and 11th to finish with 52 net points. Sligo Rovers in Ireland have announced the signing of Bermuda captain Dante Levrock from Estona outfit Never Trends. It's an exciting move. Um, I was very keen to get over to you know, Ireland, Scotland, or England. So, you know, it's, I'm glad to get over to a place that I want to play after a good season in Estonia, which was a great experience. But I'm happy to sign with Sligo. Uh, it's an ambitious club with a new manager. Uh, you know, he, after talking to him, uh, you know, he attracted me to Sligo and I wanted to be a part of what he's trying to do there. You know, we're trying to finish as high as possible in the league. You know, they're bringing in some very good players as well. So I hope to make a big impact there. And I can't wait to play in front of the Sligo fans, which they get a lot of fans as well. So that's going to be a good football atmosphere. And just playing in Ireland, living in Ireland, you know, I'm excited for it. That's all subject to international clearance. Last evening at the BAA field, the Dandytown Hornets threw the title race wide open following their 2-0 win over the defending champions, PHC Zebras. The two teams went to the break with the score 0-0, but the deadlock was broken in the 80th minute when Kwande Lathan scored for the Dandytown Hornets. The lead was doubled in injury time when Kwame Steed found the back of the net for the Dandytown Hornets to take all three points. The Caribbean Equestrian Association's Regional Jumping Challenge came to a very successful conclusion for Bermuda's show jumpers as for the third year in a row they claimed the top spot in the Caribbean teams. Members of the Bermuda winning team were You'll Be Amazed and Tyler James in the 0.70 meter class. Creme de la Creme and Candice Martins represented Bermuda in the 0.85 meter class and in the 1.00 meter class Bermuda was represented by Della Vega and Christian Truin. In a in addition to winning the team event, Bermuda's Truin was the overall winner in the 1.00 meter class. Mackenzie James riding up, up and away and Casey Truin riding Forza placed second and third respectively. In the 0.85 meter class, Martins and Creme de la Creme secured second place overall. The 66th plane of the Bermuda Goodwill Tournament came to an end as 59 teams concluded competing over three golf courses. Jerry Corvell was crowned the professional division champion with a total of 57 points after recording 22 points on the final day. In second place was second round leader Peter Ballow who had 18 points on the day to finish with 56 points. Day one leader David Lawrence finished in third with 54 points alongside Bermuda golfer Daniel Augustus. Racebrook work declared the team gross division champions as they finished with 198 points. The Mid-Ocean Club A team won the net division with 179 points. Northlands Primary defeated West Pembroke 6-3 to win the Bermuda School Sports Federation's Primary School Netball Knockout Tournament at the Bernard Park yesterday. Northlands defeated Harrington Sound Primary in their semi-final 5-1, while West Pembroke had a tougher route to the final after they edged Bermuda High School 4-3. I'm Earl Basden with Bermuda Broadcasting Sports. 
Thanks, Earl. Well, cryptocurrencies can seem to catch a break. Bitcoin hit a fresh yearly low today as the crash in crypto prices carries on. Once the darling of adventurous investors, Bitcoin is now more than 80 percent off last year's high. And it's not the only crypto collapsing. On the breakdown tonight, Tony Waterman explores what the price collapse could mean for Bermuda's crypto ambitions. It's certainly going to reduce the amount of hype and the amount of money that was thrown at people, but I think it's going to filter down to the the people and the companies that are really dedicated to building products. And that's been the big uh, disconnect so far, is that we really haven't had people de- focused on delivering value. And that's what we haven't seen enough of, is value and actual real-world solutions. We don't need just another uh, currency created that, like Do- Dogecoin. Mm-hmm. Um, or another currency on top of that. We, we need real innovation. You can catch that entire interview tonight on The Breakdown with Tony Waterman at 8 p.m. on ZPM TV9. Still to come, Rally Bermuda calls on new recruits for 2019. We'll be back in just a few minutes. The year-end clearance sale is now on at Bermuda Motors. Cargo ships bringing our 2019 models will be arriving soon. To make room, we're offering the lowest prices of the year on these models. Ford Figo, our hatchback with cutting edge technology. Ford EcoSport, big on comfort, safety and power. Toyota Avenza, the perfect balance of style and function. Toyota Prius C, our fuel efficient five door hybrid. So hurry, prices are available until the end of the year or while our inventory lasts at Bermuda Motors. From the very beginning, it was always our singular focus to do whatever it takes, use every possible resource to fight cancer, and never lose sight of the patients we're fighting for. Our cancer treatment specialists share the same vision. Experts from all over the world working closely together to deliver truly personalized cancer care. And these are the specialists we're proud to call our own. Expert medicine works here. Learn more at CancerCenter.com. Appointments available now. Treat yourself and your loved ones this Christmas at Diamonds International in Dockyard. Sparkling diamond rings from Crown of Light. Stunning gold and diamond bangles by De Beers Forever Mark. And brilliant tanzanite and gold necklaces. During the holidays, there is 15 to 75% off all merchandise. And this watch as a free gift with every purchase. Plus 5% of all shopping proceeds will be donated to the LCCA charity. There is nothing comparable on the island to the truly outstanding collection at Diamonds International in dockyard at argus our interest is you each of you around here we know that when two people seem the same they can have very different insurance needs for their health home work and future which is why we take the time to get to know you as an individual so we can provide insurance coverage that fits your life because after all Our interest is you. Rally Bermuda is looking for new recruits for its 2019 program, which offers young adults an opportunity at personal growth and to learn life skills. Support, connection, adventure, personal development. These are things Rally Bermuda offers to recruits between the ages of 17 and 24. Antoine Williams trekked to Nepal for the first time this year, which led him to gain a new perspective. Met about 40 internationals from like the UK and then along with the villagers. Even though we couldn't communicate with them, we connected with them so easily just through like sign language. Because well, like they don't speak, they speak very little English. English, so to, um, being able to connect with them was a beautiful thing for me. For Antoine, signing up for Rally was a welcome change of pace. My life was kind of real repetitive, like my daily routine, and I just needed a little change. I wasn't really going there to find out a whole lot about myself or like I had a specific reason. It was just like I needed a change of atmosphere, a scenery, something new to do. 28-year-old Carrie Pacheco took a leap of faith by joining Rally in 2013 while she was in a difficult space, but later traveled to Borneo last year as a project manager with more responsibilities. It's not fitting in, not being happy in life, um, just depressed, all of that. So that was my initial adventure to get out there for a new perspective, and that was my, the catalyst for positive change for me. 
Carey is now employed full-time as a program coordinator with Rally and continues to mentor in the local program. I feel like a totally different person. I've been given skills um, and training that has taken my development out the roof and it's continuous. It's not just a program where you have this one-off experience and that's it. It's like it's a brotherhood, a sisterhood, a family, a networking system. It's a mentoring system. It's, it's all of that wrapped in with love. And it's just, it really has been my savior. And I want to just throw this out. If anybody's feeling lost, not feeling like they have that connection, you're searching for connection and looking for more, then rally might be for you what it was for me. According to the charity, there are over 140 alumni members locally who are open to providing support and friendship for young people in search of their true selves. To register or find out more details, there's an information session at number 2 mid -Scene Lane on December 10th from 6 p.m. And I'm Jasmine Patterson. Thanks for watching. Good night. Jasmine Patterson's wardrobe and makeup is provided by Gibbons Company. Can save a girl with an extremely rare blood type. All that and much more beginning with the headlines in 60 seconds. The final farewell for President George H.W. Bush. It's another remarkable day of tribute. The eighth presidential funeral train in American history. The Navy's first ever 21 fighter 